Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today's webinar. I'm Ari Trigger, a member of the pre-sales department at ProVision ISR, located in Israel. Today, I'd like to discuss an innovative solution to a common challenge in remote camera viewing. So, picture this scenario. You've installed an IP camera for remote monitoring at a kindergarten. However, as more and more parents attempt to access feed simultaneously, the system becomes overloaded, causing lag to creep in and eventually leading to the video feed stopping entirely. And you're very unhappy, parents. But I have a solution for you. Today, I'm here to introduce you to an innovative approach which involves broadcasting ProVision ISR cameras live on YouTube using the HTMP protocol. By leveraging this method, we can bypass the limitations of traditional remote viewing. With YouTube as a platform, we simplify the amount of streams by sending only one stream from your camera to YouTube, and YouTube takes care of the rest, thereby eliminating the bottleneck of concurrent streams that cause lag and interruptions. Furthermore, with YouTube, anyone with an internet connection can view the camera feed, and in terms of scalability, YouTube can handle a multitude of viewers without any issues. Additionally, its embedding capabilities make it easy to integrate the stream into websites or share across social media platforms. For this webinar, I'm going to divide it into two sections. Initially, I'll cover the theory of a PowerPoint presentation, and then I would like to proceed to demonstrate each step live in a practical session. The seminar or webinar should be no longer than 15 minutes, so please bear with me. So, let's start the theory. So, I've compiled, I've compiled a list of additional applications where live broadcasting can, highly, can be highly beneficial, many of which you can easily relate to. So, you want a laser pointer? One immediate example is broadcast in live surf conditions, allowing surfers to make informed decisions before heading out to catch some waves. Similarly, at ski resorts, live broadcasts of slopes can help skiers choose which slope is less crowded and on current weather conditions. Um, as mentioned earlier, live broadcasting is particularly useful for kindergartens where there's no limit to the number of parents streaming in to check on their children, and at public pools, Patrons can check weather conditions and also pool occupancy levels. I think you get my point, but as you can see, there are many, many applications. I'm sure you guys can think of a lot more than I can show you right now of where we could use utilize broadcasting live to YouTube with ProVision ISR cameras. In order to begin, we need to understand about the prerequisites, and luckily there aren't that many. There are only three, uh, so let's begin. The first prerequisite is to obviously have a ProVision ISR camera that supports the RTMP protocol. And from firmware 5.1.3, RTMP will be 100% supported on the ProVision ISR cameras. Um, in order for you to know or to find out and to see if your camera does support RTMP, this is an extract from our spec sheet of our camera. Uh, within the network module, you can go and see network protocols and look out for RTMP. If it says RNTP, the second prerequisite is a YouTube user account. Pretty much anyone with a Gmail uh, account will have access to a YouTube user account. All you need to do is log into YouTube with your Gmail uh, credentials and you'll automatically have a YouTube user account. And I'm pretty certain the third prerequisite will not, won't have any effect on any of us is that, is that the internet speed needs to be a minimum of 2 megabits per second. Okay, so those are the three prerequisites. Let's get started. We're going to start off this journey on YouTube. And we're first going to check if your YouTube account uh, has access rights to broadcast live. Uh, so first thing we need to do, uh, excuse me, is sign in to your YouTube to your YouTube account or Gmail account on YouTube, and then click on the Create button, which looks like a, a camera with a plus sign, and then you'll see Go Live. You're going to click on Go Live. If you get prompted to request access to streaming, that means you have never um, broadcasted live streaming before, 
and you just need to follow three or four simple steps in order to authenticate your account to broadcast live. So what you want to do is you want to click request. You'll then be prompted to enter a phone number, cell phone number to verify your account. So once you've entered your cell phone number, YouTube will send you a one-time pin, which you're going to enter into YouTube. And then YouTube uh, will take 24 hours basically to authenticate your account. And then you can come back in 24 hours and your account should be authorized to do uh, live broadcasting. So in this instance, I've already done this process and I have authenticated my account. So we are going to go and start the journey um, from clicking on the create button again and going to go live. Once you've done that, it's going to open up YouTube Studio and all of you will be shown the standard uh, screen or set of menus or, or settings. Uh, and this is one of the most important steps of the process. And that is making sure that you copy the correct URL to put into your camera in order to direct your camera stream to YouTube, your, your YouTube account. So you've got to locate your YouTube stream URL as well as your stream key. And then you need to concatenate both of these into one, one URL. So we're going to first start and we're going to copy the YouTube stream um, URL. And then we're going to put a forward dash. Okay. And then we're going to copy the stream key and paste it after the forward dash. And we're going to save this somewhere because uh, we're going to need to paste it into our camera settings later on in the process. So that's a very important step that you need to be aware of. And you need to be aware of this, of this correct sequence. So you first copy the YouTube stream URL, paste it, put a forward dash, copy the stream key, and paste it after the forward dash. And put it aside because we're going to need it later. Okay. So now we've done baby steps or initial steps inside YouTube. Now we're going to go and, and set up our camera. So in order to do this, I'm going to utilize our RPC manager tool software. And I can okay, we'll select the camera that I want uh, to broadcast live. And I'm going to double click on the camera, which will automatically open up the camera's web interface or web GUI. For my instance, for my case, for majority of people, it should open up uh, Microsoft Edge. And then once in Microsoft Edge, we recommend that you um, request to reopen the web page in Internet Explorer mode, as this will give you a much more seamless experience. Okay, so now we've opened up the camera's web GUI, we've logged in with the username and password, and then we're going to go to config and locate image settings and video and audio. When we click on video and audio, we're going to be brought up with this menu. Now, there are certain requirements needed in order to broadcast live on YouTube. Um, so first of all, you can choose any mainstream, substream or third stream, it doesn't matter. But the resolution, the bitrate type, as well as the video type, all need to be. You need to make sure that they are follow the following uh, rules. So, for mainstream or for any of the resolutions, should I say, your resolution cannot be more than two megapixel. So, if you've got a camera that's four, five, six uh, megapixel, eight megapixel, you will need to drop the resolution to a two megapixel. Then we want to change our bitrate type to a constant bitrate. Uh, so if it's on variable, please change it to constant. And then very important, we need to change our video encoding to H.264. Once you've done that, we can hit save. And remember, you can choose any of the stream types. It doesn't have to be mainstream. I just, for this example, we've used mainstream. Once you've pushed save, you want to click on audio. And then you're going to be brought up with this menu, the audio menu. And you're going to enable audio and hit save. Okay, so now we've set the requirements of our video and audio. And now we want to go to our network settings within our camera. And we want to point the camera to our YouTube URL. So in order to do this, we're going to go back to config or network settings. And we're going to locate RTMP. Once we've done that, click on RTMP. And we're going to be, uh, the, the following uh, options are going to be presented to us. Um, we want to obviously enable RTMP 
And it even says there, it's only supported on H.264. So that's why we had to drop our resolution or our compression to H.264. Then we can choose our stream type. So depending on which stream type you have set up uh, for YouTube live broadcasting, you'll basically select it here. Then we have the option to select the time that the camera is going to try to reconnect to YouTube in the event of a disconnection. So you can play with that. And then the important part is the server address. This is where we paste the, the YouTube URL, which we concatenated. We paste it here into the server address, and then we hit save. Once we've done that, we can push refresh, and we can make sure that our connection status changes to connected. Okay, that's all we have to do on the camera side. By now, um, when you go back to YouTube, it should automatically uh, be broadcasting your camera live. Okay, so now we're back within YouTube and then just like any YouTube video that you upload, you can push edit and you can give it a title, you can give it a description, you can give it a category and these are all uh, YouTube um, categories that you can select. And then if you've got playlists within your YouTube accounts, you can select which playlist this live broadcast must appear on. And also you can select if the video must be a private video, unlisted video or a public video. Additional settings on YouTube um, is to enable the DVR on YouTube. This means once enabled, when you finish live broadcasting, YouTube actually saves that live broadcast to your YouTube channel. And so people who missed the live broadcast can always go back and watch it again. There is also an interactive two-way chat, uh, which is part of the YouTube live broadcast. So if you want to have an interactive chat, with your audience while broadcasting live, uh, you can do so as well. Also a very important part is, um, you know, once you've set that all up, it's obviously share uh, the, the YouTube uh, web link. Um, so you can either share it via WhatsApp, Facebook, post it on X. Um, there's many obvious options for you to share it and people, you can click on the, the, the video link, obviously be able to access live um, broadcasting. Okay, so let's move over to our live practical and we, in YouTube, remember I've already authenticated my accounts to do broadcasting. So I'm going to click on the create button and hit go live. YouTube studio, we'll just wait for it to load. And I'm looking for the stream key and the YouTube URL. So the, sorry, the stream URL and the stream key. So remember, we need to copy and paste this in sequence. So I'm going to open up my notepad. And first, I'm going to copy the stream URL. Then I'm going to put a forward dash. And then after the forward dash. Okay. So that's all I want right now from YouTube. Then I'm going to go to my RP Tool Manager and I've already I've already selected the back DDA. So I'm just going to open it up in Edge. And then I want to click on the three dots and go reload in Internet Explorer mode. We're going to put in the username and password of the camera. Okay, I'm going to go to Config, Locate Image, Settings, and then Video and Audio. For this example, I actually want to do Substream. So I'm going to go to Substream. I'm going to take the resolution up to 2 megapixel. I'm going to change my bitrate to Constant. I'm going to change my video compression to H.264. And I'm going to drop my bitrate to 1024. So the higher the bitrate, kilobits per second, the more bandwidth required on your network. I'm going to hit save. Okay. And then I'm going to go to audio. And okay, it's already enabled, but let's pretend it wasn't enabled. I'm going to hit enable. And I'm going to hit save. Now I've done my prerequisites in terms of my audio and video settings. I'm going to locate network. And now I want to, I want to direct this camera to the, um, the YouTube URL. So I went to network and I'm going to click on RTMP. And then I want to obviously enable it. 
It's going to give you a message to say that the trans transmission content will not be encrypted. You push OK. And then it actually says there, only supported on H.264. Now we've set up Substream to broadcast live. So I'm going to select that. But this is where you would choose main, sub, or third. I'm going to leave reconnect after timeout to five seconds. And now I want to go and copy that URL that we concatenated and paste it into the server address. So I'm going to go to my notepad. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it over here. And then I'm going to hit save. Okay. I'm going to hit refresh and make sure that connection status is connected, which it is. Okay, so hold thumbs. I'm going to go now to my YouTube studio and hopefully it's already started live broadcasting. There you go. Um, it started to live broadcast. And then we can go to edit and we can change the title, give it a description. We can make the visibility public, unlisted, or private. We can select a category. Uh, we can add it to an existing playlist. Okay, um, also we can enable DVR, disable DVR, and then most importantly, we can also share. Um, so we can share with all these options. Uh, we can just copy the link and paste it into the browser. This will open up YouTube. Okay, so it's live. Okay, and then we've also embedded it, or pre-embedded it before this webinar into one of our web pages on our website. So it'll look like this. And when you want to start watching, you can hit play. And you can you can obviously broadcast live on a, on a website. Guys, um, in theory, it's a few steps. I hope it came across as very simple because it is. Uh, I hope I was clear. Um, yeah, and uh, I look forward to seeing a lot of ProVision ISR live broadcasting in the future. Uh, thank you so much for joining me um, and we'll hopefully chat soon.